All right. Wow. Praise God. That was really close. We couldn't get this thing started. And um, my phone wouldn't get on the Facebook with the live video. Couldn't start anything. But uh, now we are here. So that is good. Thank you, Sherry, for posting that there. Uh, we'll wait a couple minutes to get everybody on here. And then we will get started. So praise God that he enabled technology to work. Again, if you didn't see me last week, um, my name is Graham Wathen, and I'm the new renewal leader for the Young Adults College Group. Um, just so everyone knows, if, if we haven't heard of this yet, we've moved it to Thursday nights, uh, the renewal meeting. So anyone that's out of high school up until age about 25, 26 or so um, are welcome to come. It's Thursday nights. We have dinner in the renewal house, which is that little house. Um, down on the other side of the parking lot uh, at the Grace campus. And we have dinner at 6, then we have uh, worship and Bible study at 7. Uh, good morning, everybody. So if you know anyone of that age group that'd like to come, we're going over a foundation series, talking about um, just what we believe and why we believe in it, where the evidence and everything is. Um, so if you want to come, that is open. But uh, this morning, let's pray, and then we'll get, get into this. So, Lord, thank you uh, for your goodness and your greatness in our lives. Thank you for your truth. And Lord, thank you for your promises. No matter where we are or what's going on, those are what rings true, and those are what give us the hope to move on and and keep going in these lives. These lives are full of uh, frustrations and hardships. These lives are full of uh, disappointments and and just heartache. But you, Lord, have overcome all these things, and you're so far greater, so much greater than all these things. So we look to you, and we ask that you would fill us with your spirit that we may hear what you would want to say to us that you would teach us lord through your word and by your spirit that you would change us a little bit more to be more like you this morning lord we need you and so we call out to you and we know that you hear and we thank you for that in jesus name well, this has been a difficult few months for uh, our family and for um, extended family, uh, not because of, you know, moving here and what's going on and such, but um, the, my brother-in-law has been in the hospital for um, uh, eight, seven, eight weeks. He was in the ICU for seven or eight weeks with... Uh, he went in with COVID, he had some prior uh, lung issues and stuff like that. Um, so he was, his lungs were already really damaged, but he went into the ICU and they had him sedated. Uh, they had him um, in a medical induced coma and a medical induced paralysis. Um, and he was, it was touch and go for a while, uh, but he really started to improve. And we, you know, a lot of people were praying, a lot of people were uh, calling out to the Lord. And it, it was very uh, encouraging because he started, he really started to improve, his, um, got through COVID, but all the effects of everything, his lungs started uh, doing better. Um, and, you know, different systems, his kidneys were coming back online um, and such. And so as he was getting better, they, they were looking at moving him from the ICU to a uh, extended care facility. Um, and that, the, because of insurance reasons, that took an extra week uh, while he was in the hospital. They were pulling him off of, of the sedation meds. Um, and as they were pulling him off of those things, he'd get really anxious and he'd wake up and not really know what's going on. And uh, they never know how someone's going to do coming out of those things. Um, and this over the weekend, a few days ago, he had, well, I think, I guess it was Friday, um, they were supposed to be moving him that day to a long-term long -term care facility where he could get rehabbed and, um, you know, physically rehabbed and, and things like this. And uh, he had a seizure, and then he had a stroke, 
and they flew him to a new hospital, another hospital in the area that specialized in, in um, brain surgery because he had a brain bleed. And by the time he got there, it had bled out so much uh, that they weren't able to do anything with it. There, um, he was. Uh, uh, they couldn't do anything, so they did a test, um, and he was pronounced brain dead. Um, and um, after the family was able to come and see him, they took him off life support. So it was a very shocking uh, turn of events. And as this has been going on, I've been been praying. Obviously, I've been praying a lot and thinking a lot. And um, and I'm I'm trying to comfort my family, my 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 wife, her, her family. And, um, it's, I'm finding this strange dichotomy and I want to, you know, talk and just be real with you guys. And it's, um, you know, I want to, I want to comfort and I want to say things I want, and, and verses come to mind and, and truths come to mind. Um, you know, obviously, uh, he's, he's with Jesus, you know, he's now, now he's healed fully. Um, he's, you know, we, we say these things and they're absolutely true, but I almost feel a little bad saying them because they, they can come off like platitudes. And I thought that was really interesting and I didn't understand why that's, that's going on. So I'm looking into this and kind of thinking about this. Um, thank you for all your notes, by the way. The, the family's name is Goodwin, so if you want to pray for them, he left behind his wife Sarah and four kids, which is, that's the, that's the part that I, if I start thinking about it, it I, won't be, <laughs> I won't be able to finish this. However, uh, if, you, if you think about them, that, that's, yeah, prayers for them would be amazing. So uh, anyway, I'm thinking about this and it... I'm like, why did why does it seem like platitudes? Why do those things? Why do those deep truths? Well, he's with Jesus now, or he's healed now, or he's um, he's in heaven, and there's no pain and there's no suffering, and you know, he's. I, I was asking my kids, what do you think is going on with him right now? What do you think he's doing? They're like, oh, he's he's rejoicing in in you know in the face of Jesus. And my kids are uh, six through ten. Uh, and he's rejoicing in, you know, right with Jesus and he's, he's seen David and he's seen Moses and he's, uh, hanging out with his grandma who passed away. And he's, you know, he's, they're thinking of all these different things that he's doing right now, uh, walking on the streets of cold and, and, uh, these amazing, these amazing thoughts. It's like, yeah, but as I'm, as I'm trying to comfort family members, these, this, I, I almost want to pull back because of this this feeling like it's just giving platitudes and, and it's it's not it's not right it's a lie is basically what I'm trying to say we get caught up and so focused on this life and in, on this world we get caught up in this thinking of, of what we see or taste or smell or what we experience here and now that um, this lie can creep in that there's that this is what it is that this is what's going on that this is the reality or this is our life but our life is hidden in Christ our life is not here this is not our life. This is a temporary thing. We are sojourners, the Bible teaches us. We are pilgrims. We are passing, literally passing through this life. We are running a race with a finish line uh, ahead of us. We are, we are coming through and we are traveling on. And even these, these bodies, these, these shells that house our, our minds, our spirits, our souls, they're just called tents. We see this language over and over and over again in the Bible. And especially in these days, it, 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 it would be well of us to 
to grab these things, to make these things our own, and to, to move forward with these things. Because these truths of the Bible are, are not platitudes. That's a lie. It's a lie from the enemy. These truths, it, it doesn't mean we don't hurt. It doesn't mean we don't pain. It doesn't mean saying, well, you know, Daniel is with Jesus now. It doesn't make all the pain just disappear and go away. It doesn't do that. And I don't think it's designed to do that. Jesus is the one who's going to make all the pain disappear. But um, what it does do is refocus us. It does help us to see and walk through this life in the way that, that he has us to do it. And this is what last time I was talking about. This is part of renewing our minds. This is part of uh, not being conformed to the world. Not, not just seeing the world as the world sees the world. Uh, that this life is all there is. You better grab all you can while you're here. But we're, we need to have our minds renewed by the Spirit and by the power of His Word. And His Word tells us these, these real and true things. One of the one of the things that this has brought me to is just uh, thoughts about being thankful, because this is um, in a way antithetical to our our normal mode of life. Um, when things go good, we're happy. You know, we're having a good day. Things are clicking along. Have, don't have really any problems. Uh, but when things go things go wrong, or we have trouble, or we have strife. Uh, we tend to get sad or bummed out or uh, even maybe depressed or whatever it may be. And the Bible, this is not the way it's supposed to be either. The, the things happen in our lives that are, that are hard, that are difficult, and that go through. But we are able to transcend these things uh, because of the promises of what God has given us. And I'm looking at these verses uh, about being thankful, and it's it's really interesting. So, First Thessalonians five eighteen um, is the first verse we'll check out. It says, "Well, let's start at 16. First Thessalonians five sixteen through eighteen. Rejoice always. It's a, I mean." You could teach four or five Sundays just on this one verse. It's two words. Rejoice always. It, there's no uh, caveats. There's no um, uh, qualifiers. There's, there's nothing besides a simple command that is backed up by the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The hope and the... the um, promises that he gives us rejoice always it goes on to say pray without ceasing and in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you and everything give thanks and we we know this verse we've heard this verse but when the rubber hits the road do we do we do this verse is this what we do I don't I don't this isn't the first thing I go to when, when I don't like what's happening, sadly. Um, I, might, I do come around to it. I pray. Um, I pray the Spirit helps me to, to remember this in those times. But it's, um, it's not always the first thing I do. The first thing I do is get maybe frustrated or get upset or uh, bummed out or whatever it may be. And that's the tendency. This is a human nature, our old man, but this is what we need to renew and change and, and, and move on from. But he says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Ephesians 5.20, a few pages back. Ephesians 5.20 very closely mirrors this thought says, uh, 
Go look at 19 also. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of, Je of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always. There's, there's no time we need to stop giving thanks. There's no time we should stop um, for all things. But again, all things. This happens and that happens. And we're, we're to give thanks for it. Because in Christ Jesus, this is, this is what we're we have, this is what we're able to do. These are how great and how precious and how amazing and how eternal, how transcending these, these promises and the love of Christ is for us, the things he's done in us, the eternal ramifications of what he's given us by his death, burial, and resurrection, his, the forgiveness of sins is... We will literally be learning about this forever, for eternity. Um, it's going to take forever to teach us of the depths of the riches of his love for us uh, in, this, in this thing that, that God did for us called the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to le learn about this forever. That's how deep and how amazing and how just awesome it is. So obviously... I can rationalize that this, this goes beyond anything we can experience here. This goes far beyond and far deeper. It's far greater and far better than any um, thing that can befall us in this world, whether it's losing a job or whether it's um, losing a loved one, um, whether it's uh, losing functionality of our own body or this or that or you know whatever we may be dealing with. The promise and the, the hope and the love that is shown abroad in our hearts by God through the gospel of Jesus Christ is infinitely greater and infinitely deeper than, than anything we're going to go through or we're going to experience here and now. Uh, one more, well, not one more, one more about giving thanks is Colossians 3, 15 through 17. Colossians 3, 15 through 17. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which you also were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of, of Christ, uh, sorry, it's 15 through 17. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to Him, to God the Father through Him. Twice he, he says that we are to be thankful. We are to let the peace of God rule in our hearts. It's The peace of God is already given to us. It's already there. We already have it. We, have, we can read about it. We can experience it. His Spirit is with us. And we can... It's already there. We just need to let it, let it rule. And how do we let it rule? By adjusting the way we think, by renewing our minds, as it tells us in Romans 12, 1 and 2, by not thinking as the world thinks, but thinking as God is teaching us to think in his word, by conforming not the word to what we think, or by reading into it, but by letting the word adjust the way we see reality, we see the world, we see what's going on, we see what's happening in our lives. These things, they're, they're doable because of, of Jesus. Again, I keep coming back to this. I'm, I feel like I'm just saying the same thing over and over again, but I, I need to hear it. And, and maybe someone out there does too. We are able to give thanks, verse 17, in Colossians chapter 3, says, giving thanks in everything. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. Whatever you do, whatever is going on. And, and it can also be read as, whatever you do, give thanks. 
This is interesting. So what's another interesting thing is who wrote this? Who wrote Ephesians? Who wrote 1 Thessalonians? Who, who wrote Colossians? Paul, right? Paul the Apostle. And we, we look at him and these, these verses um, are something else. But uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 22. Start there. 2 Corinthians 11, 22. This is the guy who wrote these things. This is the guy who, who wrote give thanks always in everything. No matter what's going on, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Three different, uh, at least three different times he tells it. And we can read about giving thanks in the Psalms. We can read about giving thanks in many other places. Um, but this is the guy. This is his, um, this is his other letter, obviously, to the, to the Corinthians. Um, but it's like a resume. <laughs> it, it reads like a resume. Um, so 1 Corinthians 11.22 Paul is speaking, and again, he's the one that says, give thanks. He's the one that keeps reminding us, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, and sleeplessness often, and hunger and thirst, and fastings often, and cold and nakedness, besides the other things, because that's not enough in that list, it's, there's other things too. What comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. I, you gotta wonder, did did he ever have a good day? I, it's uh, of course, you know, we know that um, he did, and I'm sure there there's ups and downs in his life, just like ours. He was a man, just like us. This is not a story we're reading. This is these are historical accounts. I don't I don't tell my kids, well, let's read a Bible story, or what Bible story did you learn in church this morning? These are historical, accurate accounts of real people and real situation and real lives. This is a man, just like a person, just like you and me, who who went through these things. He's not some super apostle or or super human. He's he's a man. And he went through these things. But he was so focused and so convinced, and he had his mind so altered and changed by the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, that he's able to go through this, all these things. None of us have been through all this stuff. We might have tasted one or two of these things, but none of us have ever been through this. But he was going through this to the degree where he would then write, Give thanks in all things. Who else is qualified to give us this advice? Give thanks. Give thanks. So as I as I bring this all together and think about this, the hardship the family's going through and the the, the platitude attack that can come. It's it's just a, it's a lie. The word of God is true and it is strong and it is powerful. And if I don't give somebody that, what am I giving them? If I don't give myself that, what am I feeding myself? And I'm glad you guys are here. This is awesome. This is beautiful. You know, you guys are here to, to get this, to gain this, to, to feed your spirit more and more, to transform your minds. This is what you're doing and praise God for that. But whatever you're going through, 
today, whatever you're dealing with, whatever hardships have happened to you now or in the past, give thanks. Let's stop. Let's thank the Lord because these things are temporal. These things are only temporary. And it's not a platitude to say so. They're hard. They're difficult. And they're, uh, they can be excruciating. And I understand that. I get that. But we can give thanks because of the hope that has been poured out in us by the sacrifice, by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the hope what we have in heaven, by what we know is to come. It's, it's this dichotomy that we, we live in, kind of torn between two worlds. This dichotomy of the flesh and the spirit that Paul talks about in Romans. This wrestling, this contending, this, this fight that we're in every day. I was talking with Pastor Josh the other day and he said, yeah, uh, I was reading a, a quote from a guy and he goes, yeah, sometimes it seems like we're just in this battle. We're in this battle. We're fighting. We're fighting. And every day you wake up and it's just a battle just to live this life. And it's like the guy he was reading said, well, it's because it is. <laughs> Have we forgotten what we, we read in the word of God? Have we forgotten what this tells us? We are in a battle. But that's going to be over. I believe soon. It's going to be over. So keep going. Keep fighting. Whatever is facing you today, keep going. Keep fighting. Stop and think about it in the light of God's word. Think about it in the light of eternity. And, and give thanks. I don't want to say begin to give thanks because I hope that we are doing that. And I think we are doing that too, to some degree. But there's always room that we can do that more. Is that the first thing I do when something happens? Do I, do I truly thank God? I'm like, oh, praise God, this happened, great. No, that's not the right attitude. But if, I, if I'm truly thanking God, whether it's a flat tire or a, 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 a loved one that just passed away, can I truly thank God knowing that he is sovereign, that he loves us, that he cares for me, that he died for me, that he has a future awaiting or we don't have to deal with any of these things. Saving us from this life and the toils and the hardships of it all. Moreover, saving me from my sins. I, I don't. I don't always do that. I don't do that often enough at all. But I want to. Because that's reality. That's eternal. That's what's la lasting. That's what's going to go on past anything we experience here or past anything uh, that happens to us here. The heavens and earth will pass away before one letter or period of God's word does. His word and what's going on in the future is more firm and more strong and more lasting than the very earth we stand on and we don't we don't always think in these these ways think in these terms so be encouraged i know a lot of us are going through hard things it's um it's part of life but it's there for a reason god doesn't let us go through these things these sufferings uh just for fun he's not sadistic he he lets us go through these things that we may turn to him in faith, that our faith may be deepened. Do I believe God even in the light of this? Do I believe what his word says? And will I do it? Not just do I believe it, but will I believe it to the degree that I will do it in light of what's happening in my life? I, I want to say yes. And I need to say yes. And I will say yes. Because... Where else can we go, Lord? You alone have the words of eternal life. So, praise God in all things. For he is good and his love endures forever. And he will see us through to the end. Hang on, brothers and sisters. Keep going. Fight the good fight.
Our reward is coming soon. We say Maranatha. <sighs> That'll be a glorious day. But until then, we keep on. So God bless you, family. And thank you, you guys. So many of you have come up and, and uh, loved on me and loved on my wife and my family there at the church. And uh, it's great meeting you all. You guys have a, it's an amazing, amazing body there. And uh, we're, we're blessed to be here. So God bless you today. Uh, may he walk with you, talk with you. May your hearts and minds be open to the reality of, of who he is and what he's doing. May he bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. God bless.